for the trading floor of the NYMEX. I'm Jill Malandrino for the street and Zook. We've seen some extreme moves in gold, but it still is trading within that range. Certainly the range from 1170 to 121 and a quarter still seems to be in play. Uh, every time they get it towards the bottom, uh, it snaps right back. And uh, every time they try to consolidate over 12, we see the lows again. But volatility within a small range, right? we've been looking for all year. Right, so well, traders got exactly what they wanted. But fundamentally, has anything changed or is a lot, a lot of this predicated on the dollar and interest rate speculation? Of course, what's happening in Europe? Uh, certainly the dollar situation has changed. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of strength in the euro lately. We seem to have been put in the bottom there. And yet gold has not been able to rally and uh, at times uh, does have those sell-offs. And because of that, uh, I'm becoming a little bit more bearish because when uh, the dollar has hit its high and its peak seems, uh, the, the, the gold should have gotten a little better run in it. Uh, so when bullish things don't happen, when other things in that chain should move gold higher, I, it makes me a little suspect. Now how about copper trading at two spot nine four? That's over 20 cents since the last time we spoke about a week ago. Well, copper's had uh, some good news in terms of uh, production shortfalls. Uh, there's been rains in the desert in Chile. Uh, there's been uh, earthquakes not necessarily uh, affecting that production, but uh, some of the ore grades have uh, diminished. Some of the projections for the rest of the year are lower than initially expected. So the demand story on the China side is uh, uh, pretty much static, but the production figures that we had seen being less put us in a little bit of a deficit situation and has put uh, the copper uh, almost back up to $3. It's interesting because copper is one of the last commodities that actually trades on true supply and demand. Well, you know, the, the funds do like to pick on the poor country cousin of copper all the time, and uh, now they seem to be a little bit more bullish than they have been. Uh, interesting of note, uh, a couple of weeks ago there was a Chile convention uh, in which uh, producers and uh, consumers and uh, major analysts uh, uh, give presentations. Uh, virtually every one of those presentations uh, was bearish on copper in the short term. I was thinking that we received much lower numbers, and of course uh, the copper proves everyone wrong at the conference once again. Made the crowd, right? Thanks very much, Duke. From the trading floor of the NYMEX, I'm Jill Malandrino for The Street.